Hey guys and welcome to my channel. In today's video I am going to be doing a first impression and review on the Kat Von D Locket Foundation. I know that I'm a little bit late to the party, like way late, but oh well. I mean my opinion is an opinion and hopefully it'll help somebody. I have a sample of the foundation and the primer. So it came with this little like card, it shows the foundation. And then it came with these kind of like attached to it, but obviously I've already put it on so I've like ripped it all apart. But hopefully you guys enjoy this video, hopefully it's helpful to somebody. Please enjoy and get right on into applying this to my face. Okay, so before I get started applying this on my face, I just want to read you a little bit off of the website real quick here. And it says that this high pigment full coverage foundation has a matte finish and 24 hour wear. And it says with just one light layer, it's supposed to correct discoloration, stop shine, and hide blemishes. An exclusive high tech blend of silicone elastomers and silicone esters to bind the formula so you get total matte coverage that stays waterproof fade proof and transfer resistant all day long. They have completely redid like their shading systems. They have 30 shades and it says that they have now included undertones so like warm, light, neutral, cool, you know stuff like that. So and that foundation is $35. It says that the Locket primer is hydrating, ultra hydrating, water-based, and preps your skin for perfect long wear foundation application. So it's designed specifically for long wear matte foundations and it has the hydratingness to it because that is matte and it keeps away your shine and everything so you gotta add hydration back into it so that your skin feels more comfortable. And it says that it's really lightweight, milky and has a milky texture and it says that it's infused with nourishing ingredients such as vitamin B5, aloe vera, jojoba, and shea. So that is $32. I have shade 54, which on this little card, it's this one right here. So it's pretty dark. I'm going to put the primer on this side. I'll put the primer on this side. Okay, so from what I can see already is that this is very like runny. And it does look like milk. Like this legitimately looks like milk, which it did say it had a very milky texture. It smells kind of good. The smell is very, very faint, but it reminds me of like my childhood. Well, they were right. It definitely does feel really hydrating. And it kind of feels like silicone. Like it did say that it had silicone in it. And it does feel like really slippy like silicone. On one side I'm going to be using a beauty blender and then a brush on the other side. And I think for the side with the primer I am going to use the beauty blender. Okay so maybe the color is not going to work but that's okay. I don't have to go anywhere today that's important. By the way, have any of you guys noticed that beauty blenders are not the quality that they used to be? I just got this like last month and it's already got rips all over it and they just keep getting bigger and bigger every time I use it. Like I don't know, like the, the last beauty blenders that I've had, like they took so many freaking months to rip and it ripped in three places the very first time I used it and washed it and now every single time that I use it, I can feel myself like ripping it more, like, I don't know, I just feel like the quality of the Beauty Blender is getting worse, like they're not, it's, it's not the same. Okay, so now I am finished blending out the Beauty Blender side, here it is on one half of my face. You can really tell that cancelled discoloration instantly, like just like it said it would, it cancelled the discoloration amazingly. And even though this is the wrong color for my skin, clearly, it doesn't look super heavy, like y you can't see it on the skin that much at all. So like normally if it's not your color, you can see it sitting on the skin more so than you would if it were your actual color. 
and I can't really see this sitting on my skin. It just looks really nice up here. The difference is amazing. Like both sides of my forehead pretty much have things like this going on. Like my skin was just kind of freaking out there for a little bit. And so I have all of these like scar marks from it. But you can tell like it really canceled all of that out and it doesn't look super heavy. And hopefully you can tell on my nose. It's not like really accentuating the dryness of my nose that bad at all. And it doesn't look like it's sitting really badly in my pores. Okay, now I have a feeling that I am going to have to use more product on the side with the brush. Actually, turns out I didn't have to use more product on this side this side definitely looks about the same coverage I really don't see it having more coverage on this side but it does kind of look more like it's sitting on the skin the beauty blender side definitely looks more natural and I didn't even really have it that wet like it's been I close all the water out of it and then like just let it kind of sit there for a second and dry while I did other things and yet it still looks like more natural on this side. I can see it sitting on my skin on this side whereas this side I really can't. But then again, I did put the primer on this side as well. Okay, so I don't actually know that that has anything to do with the primer now because I just took my foundation brush and I sat here and kind of like buffed it in for a second and then when I was finished it does the finish does look the same. This looks the tiniest bit more glowy, like from what I'm seeing this side still looks a bit more natural, but this one has gone like a lot better looking since sitting here and just kind of like buffing it into the skin. Hopefully you can see now like the finish of both sides, the brush side and the beauty blender side look pretty much the same and this side does have the primer on it. It does look a bit more smooth. Looking in the mirror in real life, it looks exactly the same, like the coverage does not look any different whatsoever, but on the camera it is kind of looking like this side has the um, more coverage. But that being said, in real life it really doesn't look any different. And here in this area it doesn't seem to be like very much accentuating any dry areas. It looks fine in my opinion, especially in um, comparison to the, the Urban Decay All Nighter Foundation. That like really accentuated all of this dryness, but this foundation is actually looking really nice. It's not clinging on anywhere, it doesn't look super heavy or cakey, and it has pretty decent coverage. So there's that. I am actually just going to go finish up my makeup and maybe do a couple of other things and then I will come check back in with you. It is currently 11.38 if you can see that. Hey guys, so I am back with a check-in. I didn't just finish my makeup. It's actually been three hours. It's been about, it's 3.01, so it's been about three hours and 20 minutes. But um, I finished my makeup and then my husband came home for lunch and everything and then I had a few things to do. But now I am ready to check in. The foundation is looking good. So as you can see, the forehead is pretty much looking the same. It doesn't look oily but I feel like it has kind of lost coverage and the side without the primer has actually like creased in these lines right here whereas this side really hasn't lost coverage but like it looks pretty much the same especially on this side except for that and then in between my eyebrows it's kind of not looking the best but it also doesn't look awful it doesn't look like super cakey but it just kind of looks gathered and then this area right here under my eyes, like beside my nose, the side with the beauty blender and the primer looks so incredibly smooth compared to this side. Like you can like really, really tell in the camera actually. Around my mouth you can see it just pretty much looks the same except for the fact that this cheek, the side with the primer, this looks so smooth. Whereas this side, like it really doesn't have as much coverage. Like that primer really does make all the difference in the world. Like, that truly is amazing. So yeah, that is my check-in for now. I will come back in a few hours, probably around 
five, five or six o'clock. So I will see you then and we will wrap this up. Okay guys, so I'm here with my final check-in on the foundation and um, I'm going to show you the close-up first and then zoom out and tell you what I think of it. So what I'm noticing now on the camera is that it actually looks different in the mirror. Like when I look in the mirror, it has like seemingly more coverage and it looks more smooth. But in the camera, it's kind of looking like it's um, lost coverage. But the main thing is that it doesn't look cakey. Like it looks really nice. It looks smooth and it really hasn't changed that much from when I first put it on. As you can see, it looks like a little bit shiny, but it's nothing where I would feel like I'd have to blot or powder if I was going to leave. And down here too, it looks a little bit shiny on the tip of my nose. But other than that, it looks pretty matte. And what you're seeing in the camera, like this has more coverage when you look in the mirror. So if you had it in real life, it would look more full coverage than this. But it does look a lot smoother on this side here where I put the primer on. And then it definitely didn't um, grab onto any dry patches, as I said when I first put it on. So really not much has changed. And so here it is once again from far away. Okay, so my final thoughts are starting with application. I do think it applies better with the Beauty Blender. Most foundations do, but this side looked a was the slightest bit more cakey when I first put it on with the brush but then as I worked it in it started to look more like this side but this side did give more coverage upon first application but then again this side also has the primer on it which I do think that helped it stay smoother and keep the coverage and it didn't crease in my forehead lines on the side with the primer as it did with this side that has kind of gone away now that it's melted into my skin but the application was nicer with the beauty blender I do think that if you're gonna get it you may want to get the primer because even in real life this side looks more smooth so um, the primer actually is really good it felt really hydrating and I um, this side doesn't really feel like more dry this side doesn't feel any more like I'd need to put moisturizer on but it did feel really nice and refreshing and it did help the foundation wear longer as I'm sure it would help other foundations especially if you're using a not so long wearing foundation. So it is 6.13 right now. It has been almost 7 hours. Not not quite, but it's been basically 7 hours and it's still looking pretty good. I haven't powdered it and this is, in my opinion, just as matte as the Urban Decay All Nighter foundation was in that review. Like it definitely kept me very matte. I don't think you would really need to powder anything, which I didn't do initially either. So it definitely does that. Um, it said on the website that this has 20% more pigment than, I don't, I don't know what they would be comparing that to other foundations or to their other foundations, but it said that it has 20% more pigment, and I do think that it was pretty full coverage upon first application, like, it gave quite nice coverage, and it even looks more full coverage looking in the mirror than it does in the camera. All of the claims that it gave really are true, like the the long wearing and the keeping you matte and the full coverage and all that and then the primer actually really was amazing like it just basically all it said about that was that it was hydrating and it would help to adhere your foundation and I definitely think it did that and as I said in the beginning one of the products was $32 and one of them was $35 so if you were to get both of them, it would cost you $67. That That's a lot of money. But when you think about it, like, the foundation on its own, I can't remember which is which, like, which one is 32 and which one's 35, but either 32 or 35, that is pretty cheap for a high-end foundation. Like, most high-end foundations are way more, like, the standard, like, 40, 45, and then they get up to like 80, you know? So high-end foundations are pretty expensive. 32 or 35 isn't that bad. And then primers are the same. Like primers, high-end primers are pretty up there. So it would be just like you were buying like a lower priced high-end foundation and primer. So honestly, when you like think of that price as a total, it's really bad. But I mean, compared to other high-end products, that's pretty good. Like that's pretty cheap. That's, you know like in the Clinique range. 
I would say it's worth the price for that, especially since the Urban Decay All Nighter foundation is more, and I feel like this is just as good, and it even looks more natural. Like, looking at my skin in the mirror, it looks more natural, and it's cheaper, so I would definitely say it's worth the price. So yeah, that's all for this video. Please don't forget to subscribe if you would like to see more videos from me, and hopefully I will see you in my next video. Bye!